Hi, everybody. This is P Brain. Uh, this is just in response to Kent Hovind challenging flat earthers, which is not a real challenge. He doesn't really want to debate. He's trying to stop the debate, be the debate before it starts. But anyway, and some people are, are throwing the name uh, Rob Skiba around and that the two could debate. Well, this video is for Kent and Rob. And I just want to say, before you even waste a lot of time with uh, flat earth scriptures, I'll just present right here some geocentric scriptures and to show that he can't refute this. So why even bother with the flat earth? Let's just go with the geocentric scriptures. And this is a post I left on Ken Hovind, but either he's uh, having the uh, comments be uh, reviewed first or I've been blocked from his channel. But basically I said this uh, to Kent Hovind official. Okay, so I said, okay, I'll end the heliocentric biblical debate right here. Ready? Before I delve into all the flat earth, stationary earth scriptures, I'll give you th three geocentric scriptures that make the heliocentric model impossible and that corroborate that the sun moves, giving us our day and night. And remember, Jesus said, and this is important, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, shall every word be established, 2 Corinthians 13.1. Now, Bible can witness itself, all right? Scripture can witness Scripture. Okay, number one, Joshua 10, 12 and 13. The sun is commanded to stop, not the earth, and it stops, and the day is extended. Quote, sun, stand thou still, and the sun stood still. Okay? The sun, and also the moon stayed, so both stopped. It's the sun that's moving. The sun stopped. The earth was not commanded to do anything. Okay? So, there's one scripture. Let's look at two. Job 9.7, which commandeth the sun, and it riseth not. The sun is commanded to rise or not rise. The earth is not commanded to move or not move, ever. Okay? These two scriptures corroborate the sun being commanded to take action. All right, there's two witnesses right there. Number three, Psalms 19.6. His going forth, it's referring to the sun, is from the end of heaven and his circuit unto the ends of it, and there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. Okay, again, it's the sun that moves. Just a side note, nothing hid from the heat of the sun. Not possible with a massive size of the heliocentric universe theory model, where the sun is, is uh, you know, tiny, tiny in this massive universe. The rest of the universe has no clue that the sun and the earth even exist in the heliocentric model, much less be affected by the heat. So for this scripture to be true, it's got to be a close local sun, right? Again, this is for Bible believers. If you're going to prove uh, something, and you're a Christian Bible believer, you have to defer to Scripture, okay? And so the point is that Kent is not, he claims to believe the King James Bible, but he doesn't defer to Scripture here, okay? So it makes the, um, go back to, not possible with a massive size of the heliocentric universe theory model, but makes perfect sense with a small local sun where everything is in range of the sun's heat. Three scriptures corroborating the sun's movement, and two corroborating that the sun is commanded to move or not move. There might be more. That I, I'm not even sure. There may be another one somewhere. According to scripture, 2 Corinthians 13.1, this matter is settled, according to Jesus. All right? Okay, just a couple more side notes. The stars falling to earth. Impossible in the heliocentric deception, where the stars are said to be many, many times bigger than they say the sun is. Almost a million miles, the sun is said to be almost a million miles in diameter. How can the stars fall to the earth if each one is a million times bigger than the earth in your heliocentric deception model? Again, I can go on and on and on. The Bible is a geocentric flat earth book from cover to cover. And I've shown you two to three corroborating scriptures. And like Jesus said, this matter is established. Okay, so this is just a short video. This is for... Um, Bible believing, or anybody who's maybe not a Bible believer, but is interested in what the scriptures say. Um, again, I can go on and on and on about the flatter scriptures, showing you scores of scripture, if not a hundred or more scriptures. The whole Bible is a flat earth book. And so my challenge 
to a Kent or a lot of times in, in comments I've said, show me one scripture that says the earth has a circuit. There is no circuit. It says the world is established that it cannot be moved. The world can refer to many things. It can refer to the world, like the, the system being under the influence of the world's economy as opposed to God's economy. Okay, but the world is also the earth in its entirety. See, the earth in Genesis refers to the ground. The ground in its entirety, the earth, is called the world also. So when it says the earth, world established that it cannot be moved. There's like three scriptures. Again, I'm not going to get into those right now. Maybe I'll do another video. So that's it from Mr. Skiba or anybody in the Kent Hoven camp. Right here, Jesus said two or three witnesses of matters established. It's established. It's done. The sun moves, creating our night and day. Okay? All right. Thank you so much. See you guys later.